Welcome again, and, and welcome to the second module uh, in piston and cylinder example problems. So let's go ahead and get started, see what we have on this second module. All right, second in a section five. So this time we're gonna look at a spring-loaded piston and cylinder undergoing a similar process. And the two example problems will be SI and English. I think you're probably maybe starting to see the drill here. Okay, let's look at the problem statement a little bit longer. I'm gonna read it as you follow along. A gas is contained inside a vertical cylinder fitted with a piston on top and of course closed on the bottom. The initial volume of the gas is 0.25 cubic meters. Sounds familiar. The piston can move in a frictionless manner inside the cylinder. It's gonna be quasi equilibrium. The piston has a mass of 25 kilograms and diameter of 18 centimeters. The piston is fitted with a linear compression spring which initially exerts 250 newtons of force onto the piston. Atmospheric air surrounds the piston and cylinder and the pressure of the surroundings is one atmosphere, just like last time. On the earth, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And now it says the gas is heated until the volume triples and the volume pressure doubles. I, let me say it again. The volume triples and the pressure doubles. So. Predictable questions. Determine the initial and final pressure of the gas. B, determine the work done by the gas during the process. So again, I'm hoping you can predict what we're gonna do here. First, we'll look for key words. Okay, piston and cylinder, closed system. Uh, in, in your solution, uh, somewhere on your sketch, you start with a sketch, you're gonna wanna write the word closed system. So at least you, communicate that you recognize this problem is a closed system, not an open system. It's gonna get you something. All right, piston moves in a frictionless manner. That's quasi equilibrium process. Okay. Now the next kind of little key trick, it says fitted with a linear compression spring. This is a mechanical engineering class, by the way. Um, and so a spring from your previous coursework, you should know that uh, uh, the spring force as you compress it gives you a variable force, doesn't it? Variable force, so therefore, we're gonna see from our sketching that it's gonna be a variable pressure inside the piston and cylinder. Given information, the volume triples and the pressure doubles. Very predictable on what you're trying to find. So part A, initial and final pressure, you're gonna be using that free body diagram for this to determine the pressures. And then finally, the work done. Since you've read the problem, you say, okay, we're asking for the work done. I, I've got a closed system, quasi-equilibrium process. I'm gonna use integral of PDV to determine work out. Now, another thing in your mind, you may be tempted to say, let me go to the book and start flipping through the pages and see if I can find the formula that addresses this problem. I don't think you're gonna find the formula in the book. I think you, you've got to bite the bullet and recognize I gotta start with fundamentals and I've gotta get, I've gotta derive this formula from the fundamentals. Okay, let's start with a sketch. And again, we're gonna need multiple sketches. I've started with my equipment set up, okay? Uh, so I've shown uh, my initial state with sort of a, a spring with a, uh, an initial known uh, initial known spring force pushing down. I've got P atmospheric and I've also got MG, the weight of the piston pushing down on this gas that's pushing back up with the pressure. And then I'm showing, so I'm showing heat in, I'm showing work out, and I'm showing a second state where the volume has, the, the pressure has doubled and the volume is tripled. Okay, and then, so I'm trying to show here, again, just as a little refresher course in compression springs, here's a compression spring that I clipped out um, of images. Okay, so we're gonna start at the, the initial force of the spring is F zero, okay? F zero is the initial 
uh, force, okay? And then as we compress it by delta Y, as we compress the spring by delta Y, the new spring force is going to be the initial force plus K delta Y, the spring constant K. It's my hope that you've got this from previous coursework, either in mechanical engineering or engineering mechanics, but, but we expect you to know uh, how a spring works. All right? So that equipment sketch should show you, I've got to find pressure. I'd better draw the free body diagram of my piston. So a little more complex than the first module. I've got the weight of the piston. That's, that's straightforward. The weight of the piston pushing down. I've got P of the atmosphere times the area of the piston pushing down. And now a third force, F of the spring. And that's going to be variable. Okay, and I've written out in my sketch, F of the spring is equal to K delta Y plus F naught. Uh, delta Y initially is zero. So F of the spring initially is F naught, which is given. Okay, what's pushing up? P of the gas times A. Very similar to the first module. So that free body diagram should inspire you and lead you to drawing a PV diagram, which you must draw. Uh, because you're looking for the work. That's going to help you visualize your work, integral of PDV. So plan your integral. I made a note. Plan your integral based on what you see on the PV diagram. And so uh, let's see what's given. Uh, it's the volume triples. I've shown that on my sketch. The pressure doubles. I've shown that on my sketch. And so what we don't know is... Um, we, we know V1. I think that was given. We don't know P1. We've got to figure it out. But once we figure out P1, uh, P2 is double that. Okay. And so a little bit more later on planning your integral, but I hope just by looking at this slide, can you see the area under the curve and can you see a path forward for determining the work out, the integral of PDV? A little more in a minute on that. Oh, and here it is. So um, plan your integrals. Let, let's focus on that. Let's see. This is the work out. Integral PDV is the area under the curve. It's going to be positive because we're integrating left to right. The shape of this area is a trapezoid. It's a linear spring. So this is a straight line starting. Okay, straight line. It's a trapezoid. And so the area of a trapezoid, without getting all messed up in math, the graph should show you that uh, the area of a trapezoid is the average height of the top times the width. And the average height is simply going to be uh, P1 plus P2 over 2. That's the average height. That's the power of these PV diagrams. Okay. And so Snoopy is giving you a little friendly advice here is that as hard as you might try, as much as you flip through the book, you're not going to find this formula for the work out for this problem in the book. So as hard as you might try, you're not going to find this. You've got to bite the bullet and learn how to do integral PDV from fundamentals. All right, so now we're going to working towards the numerics of the problem. We've got the setup, free body diagram. And so let's look at state one. Let's look at state one. Um, so here's the free body diagram in equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the Y equals zero. So we've got um, the pressure pushing up times A. There's the upward force. And then we've got one, two, three forces pushing down. A little more complex. So let's solve for P1. So P1 is going to be equal to P atmospheric plus M of the piston G plus F of the spring at state one, F naught, okay, divided by A of the piston. So I, I looked at this and, I, you know, we won't go through the algebra. You should be able to go through the algebra to get to this point, one equation, one unknown. You won't find it in the textbook. All right, units check for M. Let's look at the units check for this big term here, because it had better be KPA. Okay, it's going to be the same familiar thing. The unit check of MG over A is kilograms, meters per second squared, divided by meters squared, or newtons per square meter, or PA, pascals. 
So middle note, going to have to divide this term by a thousand to get its units into kPa. Okay, so let's uh, eyeball your formula for consistency. As you move along, let's see, consistent units. How about mg plus f? That's consistent. mg is a force, isn't it? It's a weight. That's the same as a force, all in newtons. So we're in good shape, okay? However, this, the big, we just showed that this sort of big globby thing, trying to, trying to circle it without my Zoom menu coming on, this big glob is going to have units of Pascal's newtons per square meter. All right, so uh, the diameter we know, the area of the piston we calculate, just like before, mass of the piston and G are given. Mg over A is 96.28 newtons per square meter, or pascals. So it's going to be 9.63 kilopascals. Atmospheric pressure, 101 kPa. F naught, that's the initial spring force, is given 250 newtons. Okay, So F naught over A of the piston is going to be 9.82 kPa. All right. And so um, here's our answer. We've got part A done. 120.5 kPa is P1. And then pretty easy, the second pressure, P2, it doubles. And so it, it's double that, All right? So good, we've got part A. The work done, okay? Units check again. So uh, should be starting to be more familiar. And so you're not gonna have to, once you've done four or five of these problems, in your mind, you will, you're, you've got enough familiarity so you don't have to drag yourself through this every time, but the unit check for P delta V. So let's see, remember here, we cannot take P out of the integral. We're doing the area under the curve for integral P dV. You could do the math and take 15 minutes, or you could eyeball your PV diagram and take a matter of seconds to recognize the trapezoid Here's the average height, P1 plus P2 over 2, which is going to be, uh, let's see, kPa. And delta V is in cubic meters. And so our units for work will be kilojoules, as long as your average pressure is in kPa. All right, so and then here's the math. Uh, initial and final volume. Given, let's see, final volume given, triple. Okay. Um, initial and final pressure, do the math to get the work out is plus 90.3 kilojoules. Not so bad. But again, uh, recap a little bit in your head. What made this easy was your sketching the PV diagram. Otherwise, you would have had a mathematical nightmare to go through. Trust me. Okay, example two, gonna be similar problem except in English units. All right, so I have uh, rewritten the problem. I've changed the numbers around a bit and changed the units. So initial volume is 1.5 cubic feet. Um, frictionless manner, uh, the piston has a mass of 20 lbm, pounds mass, and a diameter of six inches. Uh, the piston fitted a linear compression spring, initially exerting 80 pounds of force, 80 pounds force onto the piston. Um, atmospheric air at one atmosphere, Acceleration of gravity given, um, the gas is heated and volume triples again and the pressure doubles again. Uh, determine the initial final pressure and the work done. So you can see that the, the theory you've got, but we've got to be careful with units. So we'll go through and do that. Same sketches. Okay? Don't need to belabor that. Notice here, sketches don't have units on them, right? So that, that makes it nice and generic. Um, eyeball your formula for units consistency. We're going to have that same problem as we had in the previous situation where, let's see, I've got P in pounds per square foot. Remember my guidance, when you've got, when you're working with mathematics in English system, get your pressure in pounds per square foot. But how about, and look at this, F naught, that's going to be pounds force, Mg, that's not going to be pounds force, is it? For that, so Just remember back from the um, piston cylinder 01. Uh, this is going to have units uh, of uh, pound 
mass feet per second squared, pound mass feet per second squared. That's not pounds force. So we're gonna have to use that conversion again and be careful with our mathematics and be sure we get this into pounds force to make it consistent with F naught, the spring force of 80 pounds force. Okay. This is just a reminder from the first module, you've gotta be sure to be able to locate this one page of conversion factors um, to apply to the mg term to transform that into force, pounds force. Okay, numerical evaluation. So you can see that it's kind of long uh, for something that's really pretty simple. But the reason it's a long set is because we've got to deal with units. And it, admittedly, it's more complex to get units straight in English than it is in SI. That's just the way it is. Diameter six inches, change to feet. Calculate area in square feet. Uh, mass of the piston, G given, uh, gives you mg, a very large number, 3280 pounds mass feet per second squared. So we've got to convert, use our conversion factor to get our unit straight. So mg over a, and look at that with screenshot. I still, that should be capital A, just like from before. Um, so mg over capital A is 102 pounds per square foot. That's mg over a. That's the weight of the the weight of the piston pushing down. Um, atmospheric pressure um, converted to pounds per square foot. Then we've got our initial spring force, 80 pounds force. And so we're just going to get the math, get the math straightened out with the uh, with what we derived. And so we're going to get P1 is 26, 26 pounds per square foot, pounds force per square foot, and change that to PSI 18.24 PSIA, pounds per square inch absolute. And then in the problem, it said, hey, the pressure doubled. So we just double it uh, to get P2 is 36.47 pounds per square inch absolute. Right, halfway through. Determine the work done. Okay. Again, we're in good shape and, and you're going to get the familiarity with working with your units. If your pressure term is in pounds per square inch and your volume change term is in cubic feet, your units are going to be foot pounds force which is correct, that's it. units for work. And so the answer is, uh, when we crunch our numbers, 11,818 foot-pounds force for this spring-loaded piston. There you go. So how about a recap of those two? Man, this, the second example problem went a lot faster because now I think we're starting to, I'm hoping you're seeing the theory and you're seeing how to put it all together on your own as an engineer, not looking for formulas in the book. So here's what you did. We start with a sketch. That's where we always start. Then you look for those key words in the problem. Maybe not necessarily in that order. You keep your unit straight as you work through the solution. And seeking formulas in the book uh, is, is fruitless for you. This was an example where um, you, you'd have been looking in the book till the cows come home to look for that formula. I think you would not have found it. So uh, that's going to be key for this module. So I hope that helps as well for a little more complexity um, from just a constant pressure process. So module one, a simple constant pressure piston and cylinder process. Module two, a little more complexity where we added a, spring, a compression spring to the vertical piston and cylinder. So I uh, hope that helps you and uh, look forward. Hopefully you'll join us for the um, third module.